Aberdeen Harbour, on the northeast coast of Scotland. One of Britain's oldest businesses. It's just like a conveyor belt, you can it just never stops. <laughs> and one of Europe's most modern ports. You've got clearance to sail now. This is a glimpse into a hidden world. On our way, he's under the bell now. Of the men and women who keep the harbour running. It's fit you would call a typical woman. At the harbour, it's business as usual. What a cracking day. I think the woolly pool is going to have to come off at some point. Don't go any more, Oscar. A wee bit ahead. My usual jolly visit to, to the vessels. Howard Drysdale works for the Sailor Society, a charity that looks after the welfare of seafarers. I'm a Families of God pastor, um, but my church is the poor and my role is to go and visit the ships as they come on, uh, into the port and make sure everything's okay on board. Did you miss me last time? I did. That's why we <laughs> you came back in to see me? Oh, well, I feel honoured. <laughs> An ex-seafarer himself, he's been port chaplain at the harbour for the past 11 years. You're next. Morning. Morning. Oh, I could have brought the car over. You could have painted that for me. Good. Morning, Captain. How are you doing? Yeah, how Dan, how you're the man. Good to see you again. Yeah, yeah, fine. Nice to well, see you again, yeah. I thought you were painting because I had arrived. No. <laughs> I use humour a lot when I'm visiting ships. Mainly break down the preconceived idea that I'm the minister who's going to preach at people. I don't. I just share a taxi well, with him same. coming from the airport. Did you really? Yeah, oh, that had been experience. The driver was a god botherer as well. Oh, no. The number of guys who do bring up religion one form or another, um, and my approach is not to jump on them when they do that and then try and do the conversion bit, uh, but just simply to nudge it along a wee bit, nudge it along a wee bit. Um, and over the months and the years, who knows where it's going to lead. The Suchandra with its all Indian crew, is a ship Howard's visited many times before. And you, my friend, are finding it cold. You're yeah. wearing your woolly hat inside. <laughs> yeah, it's eh? not very cold. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Hiya, how are you doing? Leave it away. See you again. Yeah. Got some Indian news for you guys. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. While some Thank sailors you. can't wait to escape once they birth, well, others find it a more daunting prospect. A lot of seafarers won't come off the ships. Um, they're in a foreign country, they're not sure, it's a bit insecure. They're not 100% not comfortable going up the town, so they're a bit wary. We hear a lot of noise and, oh, yeah. uh, and uh, people are just screaming and shouting at I don't know whether they're looking out for a fight or... Uh, be careful, that's all I would say. Yeah. Most big ports have a seafarer centre, but there's only one in Scotland, and that's in Grangemouth. We have consistently heard seafarers saying to us, is there a centre in Aberdeen? And we say, I'm sorry there isn't. See, but it's so big, it's so busy. Why is there no centre? We saw have it looking a lot nicer. Indeed. Ever since he started as chaplain at the port, it's been Howard's mission to open such a centre. Sorry, did I... Oh, oh! <laughs> but red tape and lack of funding have made it an almost impossible task. They're big enough boxes, Brian. <laughs> Until now. And we've got pool table, we've got an internet room through there. So that's, that's really what the centre's all about, It's just giving a safe haven for the seafarer, where they can come and relax, meet other seafarers, chat. But it's due to open in just a few days. And Howard's struggling to get everything ready in time. <laughs> I'm not getting any younger, Brian. <laughs> Will you <he> join me? <laughs> I've had so many people say, you don't need a mission, it's, there's no point in having it. Uh, the oil industry is dead and dying. Who's going to be here in 10 years' time? Well, the oil industry is still going. There's still plenty of seafarers in the port, and uh, they need us here. Can't beat the banter, can you? Ah, you're a strong man. It's the 19th of December the grand opening of Howard's Seafarer Centre. 
I can't wait. I want to open the door now, and it's um, well, we've only another half hour to go, <laughs> and uh, I'll probably open the door, and there won't be a soul out there, of course. <laughs> but they're practically queuing up. How are you doing? A how are you, my friend? Good to see you. I said I would give the first seafarer in here a big yeah. hug. Okay. Yeah, that's you. You're the first seafarer. <laughs> Good to see you, my friend. Nice to meet you. My family. It's your family? Yeah. So, oh. finally... It's open and we've arrived. You've been warned. <laughs> Very good we have Seamus Club because if we have a problem, I know... It We're around uh, yeah. I know. Ooh, set it up for you. You're doing grand, man. The centre has been entirely funded by Aberdeen's maritime industry. Well, after 10 years, five months, 18 days, here we are. Uh, and I'm just over the moon that, that the seafarers are actually getting something that they want. Um, so my, my dream has not been just my dream. Howard's had some bad news. Packing is never fun. Where to start, where to finish. Boom, boom, boom. Amongst his papers is his job description. <laughs> it's to provide in the port of Aberdeen and the surrounding area a Christian ministry, welfare support, counselling and general assistance to all seafarers, irrespective of race, colour or creed. So, you know, that's what I do. That's what I've done all, all my time here. Yeah, I, uh, I was in, asked to go down to my society's headquarters down in Southampton, along with all the other chaplains. None of us expected what actually did happen the following day when we were called into the actual meeting. And um, basically the society was losing uh, lots of money and the cost of the UK chaplains uh, the five full-time chaplains uh, was more than the cost of the uh, 56 other chaplains worldwide. And I was told that there was no post in Aberdeen and they also said that they wouldn't have a chaplain in a port where there was a seafarer centre providing welfare to the seafarers. So in my success of getting a centre, I actually did myself out of a job. The news so couldn't have come at a worse time. I've just got the centre up and running and I almost feel as though the, the feet have been dragged out from underneath me. Um, which obviously means I've now got to reassess, rethink through things, um, try and work out where do we go from here. The silver lining in all of this is that it gives me a new opportunity. Um, as God closes one door, another opens. Uh, uh, a number of people have been in discussion with me uh, regarding the possibility of me staying here because my passion is still to serve the seafarers. So I'm hopeful that there's, a, there's still a position here in Aberdeen for a full-time chaplain of one form or another. And uh, yeah, it's exciting times.